voir, faisons les pronoms complément d'objet indirect. Let's do indirect object pronouns. Indirect object pronouns are lui and leur. Pronounce again, lui, leur. You use an indirect object pronoun to replace an indirect object and the preposition a. Verbs that take a are followed by indirect object pronouns. Here's a partial list. Parler a, téléphoner a, écrire a, envoyer a, acheter un cadeau a, écrire une ordonnance a, faire une ordonnance a, donner a, lancer a, Faire cadeau à, poser une question à. Now, in order to memorize the ones on the left, sometimes it's nice to have a little story or a mnemonic tool. You might want to use this one. If not, just study it. J'adore ma grand-mère. Je lui parle le dimanche. Je lui téléphone le lundi. Je lui écris une lettre le mardi. Je lui envoie la lettre le mercredi. Je lui achète un cadeau le jeudi. Je lui donne le cadeau le vendredi. Souvent, c'est un ballon. Je lui lance le ballon. Je lui fais cadeau du ballon. I love my grandmother. I talk to her on Sundays. I telephone her on Mondays. I write her a letter on Tuesdays. I send her the letter on Wednesdays. I buy her a gift on Thursdays. I give her the gift on Fridays. Often it's a balloon. Sorry, often it's a ball. I throw the ball to her. I give her a gift of the ball. Now let's change this story so that it's plural, so that it's not lui, so that we're using leur. J'adore mes grands-parents. Je leur parle le dimanche. Je leur téléphone le lundi. Je leur écris une lettre le mardi. Je leur envoie la lettre le mercredi. Je leur achète un cadeau le jeudi. Je leur donne le cadeau le vendredi. Je leur fais cadeau du ballon. I love my grandparents. I speak to them on Sundays. I telephone them on Mondays. I write them a letter on Tuesdays. I send them the letter on Wednesdays. I buy them a gift on Thursdays. I give them the gift on Fridays. I give them the gift of a ball. Now, let's go back. In order to think about these ones over here, écrire une ordonnance à, faire une ordonnance à, so write a prescription to make a prescription to. Um, let's come up with another story that might help you. Quand Odette est malade, elle va chez le médecin. Elle a souvent mal à la gorge. Le médecin lui donne des comprimés. Quand elle a une angine, le médecin lui écrit une ordonnance pour des anti... Sorry. Le médecin lui écrit une ordonnance pour des antibiotiques. Le médecin lui donne l'ordonnance. Odette va à la pharmacie. La pharmacienne lui donne les comprimés. Odette lui pose des questions. Le médecin lui téléphone pour voir si elle va mieux. Odette lui dit merci. Le médecin lui dit de rien. When Odette is sick, she goes to the doctor. She often has a sore throat. The doctor gives her tablets. When she has a strep throat, the doctor writes her a prescription for antibiotics. The doctor gives her the prescription. Odette goes to the pharmacy. The pharmacist gives her tablets. Odette asks her or him questions. The doctor telephones her to see if she's doing better. Odette says to her or to him, thank you. The doctor says to her, you're welcome. Did you notice where the pronoun lui went? In the present tense and in the future proche, it goes directly before the verb it's linked to in meaning. Je lui dis bonjour. Je vais lui dire bonjour. In the passé composé, however, it goes before the auxiliary verb. Je lui ai dit bonjour. 
Now, if you're watching this video because I told you to in your class, um, you don't actually have to know where to put it in the passive composé just yet. You haven't learned that quite yet. What you do need to know is that the indirect object pronoun, just like the object pronoun, the direct object pronoun, goes directly before the verb that it's linked to in meaning. In this case, it is linked to the verb dire, not ve. Je téléphone à ma mère. Je lui téléphone. Je ne lui téléphone pas. Notice that lui replaces the indirect object pronoun, pronoun and the preposition a. And it goes right here before the verb that it's linked to in meaning. Je vais téléphoner à ma mère. Je vais lui téléphoner. Je ne vais pas lui téléphoner. Note that there are two verbs in the sentence, verb 1 and verb 2. It goes before the verb that it's linked to in meaning. Now you try a few. Push pause, write everything out on paper, and then unpause it to see if you got your answers correct. Lance lui le ballon. Elle joue bien. Nous leur proposons du gâteau. Ils ont faim. Oh, looks like I forgot the circonflex over this A. Je lui parle presque tous les jours. Or, je leur parle presque tous les jours. So here, how do we know to use lui? Ah, because we know a singular from the next sentence. Throw the ball to her. She plays well. Here we use leur. How do we know it's plural? Oh, here. Ils ont faim. Here, we couldn't decide between singular and plural because we have no more information. You know, sometimes you have to decide between a direct object pronoun and an indirect object pronoun. First, identify the verb. If it's one of the verbs that we've seen that takes a, then you use lui or leur. Otherwise, you have to use le, la, or les. You try a few. You're going to have to decide between indirect object pronouns and direct object pronouns. You really should be pushing pause right now. If you haven't pushed it yet, I'll just keep on talking, but you really got to do it because you don't want me to go on to the next slide that has the answers. Push pause, push pause. Try it on your own. Nous adorons cette vedette. Nous l'admirons. Tout le monde veut lui parler. On lui parle et on lui pose des questions. Elle aime les questions. Elle les considère avant de répondre. Quelquefois, on lui donne des fleurs. La fin. Merci beaucoup.